bro my you're losing on a lot of watch time just because of the terrible audio quality um all right so welcome back guys to the channel uh haven't seen you guys for a long while as you can see i've got some uh, new background um <laughs> So for this week's video, uh, I was about to do a quick edit on the live stream that I did about three or four weeks ago where I animated this poster over here, you know, because a lot of people wanted to rewatch that live stream but didn't have didn't want to have to sit through uh, one hour of it. I was also pretty tired the day that I did that live stream. So yeah, it was honestly, it was pretty boring. There was a lot of good tips and values on that live stream and you know a lot of people also wanted to see uh re-watch all the stuff that i did on there yeah, and yeah so i decided to do a little bit of a different style of video where i compile the highlights of the last stream draw out all of the uh values and all the lessons that i got from it so i can say this is the uh things i need to think about more Ten Tam. It's not gonna be the usual uh, tutorial that, I've, that we've been having before. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit more personal to myself. And as always, the credit of this poster goes out to my good friend Gideon. Then she got like all good designs and stuff. I'm gonna always gonna shout her out. I don't know, but yeah, here goes. Okay, so the first thing that I can draw from the live stream is the, to take small doable steps uh, one at a time. I start out the live stream by figuring out an interesting way to animate the pair of chopsticks on the top left of the screen. I have this idea of having them come in from the top of the screen, uh, wiggle about a little bit, uh, tap the two ends together and pick up the shrimp below uh, as if there's someone controlling them. I spent quite a while working out the movements, uh, even referencing the way that I use chopsticks in real life to rationalize how the movement would work. But uh, every time I use chopsticks, I, I would just pick up a pair of chopsticks, slap them together a little bit before it grabs onto something, and then just grabs on it. This is totally cap. I don't actually do this in real life. I was getting so far ahead of myself that there was a point where I'm scared of the direction uh, this is taking me and wondering if I will be able to actually execute. But yeah, uh, talking in front of a live audience has its pros and cons. The cons were that I felt like I was constantly doubting everything I had to say uh, in order to not look stupid on a live stream. Uh, I think prawns are smaller and shrimps are bigger. Fair enough. Uh, uh, suffice to say that I'm still pretty insecure about what I'm able to do in one sitting on a project. But uh, on the other hand, I felt more motivated to push what I'm doing forward uh, instead of sitting there and contemplating about how the movements would uh, look. I just start laying down the keyframes into where I think would be appropriate for the chopsticks to be. Uh, once I have the basic layout of the movement of the chopsticks, uh, we come to my favorite part, which is adding details and refining the movements in the graph editor. I then cut the shrimp out into a different layer, and with it, I uh, parented the shrimp into one of the chopsticks. Uh, in the end, it is those small incremental steps that actually made the difference into an entire animation. Just like my uh, stream last week with the logo animation, uh, if I didn't start out, Laying down the groundwork for the animation, I'll probably never have gotten this as far as I did. The second thing that I drew from the live stream is Alpha choking makes a corner go round. So this is more a bit on the technical side. Uh, one thing from the original design that I thought would be hard to replicate were the uh, rounded rectangles surrounding the main types. I could just use the uh, you know rounded rectangular shape in After Effects, but there's no way they could have uh, the rounded edges when the two shapes are connected together. Uh, therefore, I decided to use the uh, sharp edges uh, rectangles, put them in a comp, and then applied a light choker on them. 
it crushes the alpha uh, surrounding uh, the shapes and the edges resulting in some uh, pretty smooth round corners wherever there's a sharp edge I then parented them to the types and voila now the types look like they have borders uh, and that leads me to the third thing, which is most of the stuff you need is already in After Effects. I got this from animating the glistening stars around the edges of the poster. Uh, this takes me back to the old How to Animate Stars tutorial by Johan Eriksson. Shout out to him. Um, it was a quick method of getting this cartoony four-sided star and animate it in a way that it sort of uh, glows and pulsates like an actual light source. When I started out in After Effects, I used to think in terms of simple shapes like a sphere, a square, or a triangle, but the more I went on, uh, the more I realized that all those shapes together uh, could become anything as complex as your mind allows it to be. It is like the first thing that I mentioned in the video, how much uh, small incremental steps make for a big project at the end. Small and seemingly insignificant steps adding to a simple and rudimental shape can turn them into something that serves a much bigger purpose. And all the tools you need already exist in After Effects or any other animation tools that you may have. It's all down to how resourceful you are with your tool and how much time you're willing to put out. The fourth and final tin tam of the day is simplify. The solution to your problem might be lying in front of you this whole time. <laughs> uh, this came out of the problem and my solution to animating the illustrated girl at the end. Uh, with the way that the girl was set up in Illustrator, uh, with all the highlight details on one group of layer, and all the strokes and darker details on another, I will have to take a lot of time separating the uh, details out and their strokes and shadows into their own individual groups and potentially redrawing some of the details. I wanted to opt out of that idea immediately and decided to leave the original illustration as is. I masked out uh, each of her arms into their own layers, uh, moved the anchor points to where I think her rotational movements uh, would stem from, and animated the arms. Another problem comes when the masked out details leave big gaps uh, between her arms and her hair. I was pretty desperate and was so close to leaving the problem how it was and move on with my life but then I realized that I, you know, I could just draw out some shapes in the back of the illustration to fill in the gap pretending it's her hair and some more shapes to act as her back. I've totally fixed it. No more troubles, no more problem. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> And you know, it actually worked well and in the end I realized that I worried too much about preserving original illustrational details that I almost ended up doing the exact opposite of my intention. Simplifying my thought process and execution actually preserves a lot more of the original details than I thought it would. And there you go, that was the 4 10 tam uh, sort of the lesson that I've learned while doing this live stream, you know, if you find that this video somehow helped you or, you know, was useful to you in some way, make sure to comment down below. But yeah, catch you next time. Bye-bye.